Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 10. In chapter 10 we're going to be looking at fluctuations in the business cycle and things that will lead to economic growth. And we're also going to be looking at chapter 11 as well. With chapter 10 we're going to be looking at, whoops sorry about that, we're going to be looking at economic growth and the growth in the economy. When you look at the growth you notice that individuals are gaining more money. That's what real GDP per capita is. Growth within individuals. And you'll notice that this growth has created a lot of, a lot of challenges for an economy. Because Americans can buy more when you have a higher income because it creates a higher standard of living. If you look at other countries, you'll notice they've also increased with regard to prosperity and health as well. And this growth and prosperity has created a lot more opportunities in the U.S that we should focus on. And these opportunities will create better headwinds in the future. Now, factors that will influence labor productivity is going to be capital, which is human capital, and labor and technology changes. So, human and physical capital are the two major capitals that were involved with these changes. Technolog technology is very important in our economy. When we look at technological growth, you'll notice that that is the main driver of how the economy will grow. Now, we always look at a potential. And a potential GDP, GDP refers to the level of real GDP that is obtained when all firms are operating at capacity. Now, capacity is looking at normal work hours and workforce. So the potential is where our economy should be striving for. The growth in the potential GDP has been about 2 to 3 percent. And GDP is a good indicator of how our economy is doing. If you look right here, here is the actual, the blue line is the actual GDP. The red line is looking at the potential GDP. When you look at the potential, you'll notice there's a lot of challenges. We want to make sure to keep growing on that potential, but we have these fluctuations in our economy that will create a lot of challenges. Let's go to chapter 11 now, and I want to show you some things with the implications of these growth strategies. Now, why do growth rates matter? The difference between 1.3 and 2.3 may not seem by a lot, but it really makes a large difference when you look at it over time. The economy can grow so much more and citizens can gain so much more income with a higher growth rate, even if it's a marginal change. Now, differences in incomes across countries. You're going to notice there's a large gap between the incomes of various countries. And this large gap creates a lot of challenges. Now, in the U.S., well, let's do it this way. The per capita GDP in 2012, look where it's greater than $20,000, which is not a lot of money if you think about it. You have a ton of countries that are larger than $20,000. Between $10,000 and $20,000, that means a citizen only makes between $10,000 and $20,000. You see a lot of countries like that. And look at this, less than 2,500. There's a lot of poor countries around here. And that is where there's a lot of potential to grow. Is income all that really matters? Income is not really all that matters, but it's a main driver of our economy. Because when people are able to gain more income, they're able to grow as an economy. Now, what determines what the growth of an economy? The main factor is labor productivity. When workers are more productive, they're able to grow and be able to do more with their resources. They can do this through technological change, which is an important component. The main drivers of technological change is human capital, which is education, better technology, better machines. Those are all components that will really help an economy be able to grow. And an economy that grows has key components that really have influenced those three factors. So those are my, that's my analysis for this week, and I look forward to your effort.